On Monday of Holy Week, Jesus cleansed the temple. People from all over traveled to Jerusalem, and when they arrived, they needed to exchange their Greek or Roman money in preparation for Passover. Jesus saw the money changers within the temple courts, the holy place, who not only were doing business in God's house, but they also took advantage of the poor and the widows. His heart was filled with love for those who sought God and for those who needed to be healed. So they threw out the money changers and he healed the blind and the lame. Look at Matthew 21, 14 and 15 for that story. The entrepreneurs camped in the court of the Gentiles, animal sellers and money changers alike, were not breaking any laws. In fact, the services they were offering were supposed to be helping the faithful practice their faith. But the reality of the situation was rude and a ripoff. The sounds and smells of the animals, cattle, sheep, birds, filled the air. The bantering and bargaining between sellers and buyers snuffed out any kind of spiritual feeling. The space that had intentionally been set aside for Gentiles to pray, those whose faith was determined not by birthright, but by a personal spiritual yearning, was overwhelmed by the economic activities of temple business. The place reserved for the prayers of seekers had become a shopping mall and a banking house for the chosen. Jesus decides it's time to clean this mess out. He exfoliates the old system and exposes a new layer of meaning for spiritual exploration and growth. Jesus' actions and words not only reclaim a courtyard for Gentiles to gather in and pray, they point the way forward to the fundamental change in the relationship between God and God's people. No longer will the forgiveness of sins have to be repeatedly purchased by coinage and animal blood. Jesus' very presence at the temple, the very mission he is living, declares the reality of God's new plan and purpose. The final sacrifice, the destruction of death that would be accomplished by Jesus' resurrection, the possibility of a restored relationship between God and all creation, all those events motivated Jesus' thorough spring cleaning of the temple. A new way of being in right relationship with God was already under construction. Cleansing is not something that is a once and for all time practice. Tell your kids to clean their rooms on Saturday and by the next weekend, they are a huge mess again. Do the dishes Tuesday and guess what? There's a sink full again on Wednesday. Dermatologists know a gentle daily cleansing is the best way to nurture healthy, renewed, refreshed skin. We need to clean the sin out of our lives on a regular basis by asking God to forgive us. God wants our full worship, our absolute devotion. Whenever we put something above him, that thing or person or activity or addiction can become an idol and his desire is to clean it out so we have freedom, healing, and wholeness in Jesus. So what are you worrying about? What has your attention day and night? What idol needs to be overturned by Jesus so you can be whole again?